Uh, hi, Stan and panel. Uh, I'm from the South Coast. With the recent scare, scare in our area and the current outbreak in Melbourne, should this be a wake-up call to our government that we need to start moving the vaccines out quicker? Do we need to look at having multiple COVID vaccine hubs in regional and country areas? I might go to you, Gordon Bradbury, on, on this. Um, the experience here in Wollongong, more broadly in the South Coast, regional areas, in getting the vaccine and questions about quarantine. What more can be done? Well, from my perspective, anyway, I, I just it seems a very clunky exercise. I, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it at times, and uh, it depends on which part of Australia you're from. But when we had the situation down here where we had uh, the possible uh, spread of infection here, the community did respond pretty fast and uh, the local hospital became a focal point as well as setting up other uh, testing centres. <coughs> so it is, is possible to act fast, but it, when it comes to the vaccination, that's another story because uh, we haven't handled the issues of the so-called clotting factors that influence the AstraZeneca uh, rollout. Uh, then, of course, uh, the Pfizer is the the uh, held up as the ideal, but at the same time, it the messaging around it hasn't helped. And with respect to our po political leaders, I think we've blurred scientific and medical advice, and then we also had the political advice somewhat intermingled. And I think it should have been separated. It should have been done more clearly with the scientific medical advisors doing the front work and being the, the messages, uh, messages of, the, of how it was to be administered. It, it seems to me that it's created a lot of confusion. The only thing that saved us is basically, as far as I'm concerned, is that is we've put borders up and we've been really strict in terms of managing outbreaks and that mm. saved us. It isn't... And the other thing that is concerning me is the fact unless we get our populations vaccinated, then there's an opportunity for variants to uh, pop up. And not only that, that period between the first and second vaccines needs to be really strictly managed. And that's concerning me as well. And then, of course, those with disabilities, aged care facilities and so on. It doesn't seem to have a coherence about it that builds confidence in the community. Lisa jackson um, as well as your position uh, at Sydney University, you're also an epidemiologist. Yep. When we look at, at vaccine, um, we're always told the vaccine was the magic bullet, wasn't it? That gets us to the other side, that gets us to a COVID normal. Gordon has just outlined some of the frustrations. I know that people in the room here are frustrated and confused uh, about this as well. But do you think we're getting some momentum now? I think we're understanding as an Australian community that COVID is here and that we can't be complacent. We've seen what's happened overseas. Um, there's very few people who may have connections overseas that wouldn't have stories of someone who's passed away or someone who's been diabolically mm. unwell. We've been very, very fortunate. We've missed it. Um, what we are looking at very closely and what I think we should be doing better is applying the lessons that we've learnt over the last 12 months. There's been exquisite, priceless learnings that I think are being missed, you know, that we have got a COVID vaccine rollout that's got a few hiccups. Those hiccups are going to be very, very difficult to retract from unless we learn straight away. Things like going into aged care facilities and not having 100% of the people there uh, vaccinated within the time frame of the two vaccination shots. Um, and that means the staff, that means the, the frontline staff, the nursing staff, the carers, the cooks, the cleaners, the drivers, the bus people. It has to be the whole kit and caboodle. And it can't be this ad hoc process where, oh, great, we've got some leftover vaccines, let's get them in the arms of health workers who may not have a mm. second vaccine booked. Because the thing works and the efficacy of the vaccine is based on two shots, not one. So this whole story has to be a little bit better coordinated um, and I think we need to get very serious about it. Winter is here. Can I just ask, if, if you don't mind, could I have a show of hands, how many people in the room have not had the vaccine, fully vaccinated, have not had? Wow. And, and have, have had, hands up, one, two, three, four, maybe... Maybe half a dozen or a bit, or a bit more. Um, of course, we know that there are, you know, there are circumstances here. There are different rollouts. There are different age groups. There are different vaccines. But uh, Tim Wilson, 
does it raise the question about a need for some incentive? We've seen this in other parts of the world. The United States is even running a lottery. You get a million bucks if you get your vaccine. Um, is, is, is there a need for, a, um, for, for some more incentive? I'm not convinced that there's more incentive for individuals. I suspect that the people who haven't had their hands up before saying they haven't got it, uh, the overwhelming majority would be encouraged to get it and would be happy to get it, not just to take care of themselves, um, but their sense of responsibility towards others. Um, and that's something that's obviously a very live conversation uh, in Victoria right now. But, you know, I think there are ways you could establish incentives with some of the providers to deliver um, uh, vaccine rollouts probably a bit more efficiently so that they meet benchmarks um, to make it attractive. But I think for most people who want to do the right thing and want to be vaccinated so we can return to a COVID normal, I'm not sure that a, an incentive is going to do much. The only concern I have is there is this not, not an insignificant section of the population who are vaccine hesitant. And uh, there's a number of factors that play into it, from uh, particularly mm. the concern around uh, unintended consequences, um, with, uh, with the, particularly associated with the AstraZeneca mm. um, and the side effects so, uh, around AstraZeneca. And so, but I don't think an incentive is going to get over that. I think it's about building a sense of confidence in these vaccines and that where there are side effects, they can be addressed. And that's the role of epidemiologists, nurses and doctors to consult with their patients if they do have hesitancy. But uh, as someone who has got one of the vaccines, um, I can only encourage people to do so. Are people in the room concerned Hesitant? Concerned? Hesitant? No, no, no. That, yeah, yeah, there's some. Yeah, yeah. That, it's a mixed bag. Yeah, it, 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 it is a mixed bag. I and think Diana, I'm, I'm, changed, I'm one... though, a little bit. There's not as much hesitancy as there was before. I think Victoria's taught anyone who was hesitant that they, we can't be hesitant. Well, we've seen, we've so seen, much we've seen a spike, haven't we? Now. We've seen but a spike in vaccines after the... Exactly. Can, can I go and to we've you? been told that there's a supply problem. And so, you know, across Australia, people are thinking, hmm. well, people in aged care haven't had it yet. My mother only had her first jab on the 26th of May just last week. I got mine earlier, my brother, a, you know, a month before, two months before. So we've been told there's a supply problem. And so we're doing that family hold back thing. It's not my turn yet. I think we really need some very consistent and unified communication. What I think Australians want is our leaders to stand up and give us some clear communication. And forget about whether... <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Let's forget about whether it's the federal government mm. or the Labor government, the Liberal here, the state, this and that and the other. We should just be very clear that our best defence is a vaccine rollout and the next best thing is our quarantine and how are we going to move mm. towards that? And Simon, you are so right. It should be everywhere. We should be aspiring to get out of hotel quarantine entirely. But we need to frame this properly so that people will understand, I think Australians are smart, they'll understand the messages, they'll go out and get the vaccine. Stephen Jones, I'm just wondering why we don't hear definitively that once we get to... X percentage of the population, 75, 80, I don't know what the percentage would be. Once we get to that percentage of the population with the full vaccination, once we have the quarantine, we can make a, a definitive promise that there'll be no more lockdown, that the borders will be open, that we'll be living with COVID rather than trying to, to shut ourselves down and avoid any COVID, which in a world where it is going to be around for a long time would be impossible. Yeah, look, I think... Getting back to your original question, should we put in, should we have incentives on the table? I think the best incentive is keeping yourself, your family and your neighbours safe. Correct. Keeping our hospital wards empty, mm. uh, ensuring that as a community we can return to normal. I wouldn't rule out some of the things you're talking about down the track, but frankly, the biggest issue we have at the moment is supply and getting the supply chain sorted. I imagine there'll be plenty of people in the audience who've rung up for their jab and been told maybe a week, maybe two weeks, maybe a month. It's a lot of nodding. Or you're, you're, not in, you're not in the category. I'm sorry, you don't fit a category. Or which, or which one you can or get. Or which one, yeah. And I actually want to, to the point that a couple of people... We've got two, two good vaccines that are available. Yeah. They're both safe. They're both world-class vaccines. Um, and I think it's incumbent on people like me and Tim and other community leaders to be instilling confidence in the community mm -hmm. based on the medical evidence that is available 
The other thing we can do to instill confidence is to ensure that if we're telling everyone to go out and get the jab, that the government's done its bit by ensuring the supply chain is made available. I'd have done it differently. Um, I'd have had more mass vaccination hubs and I'd have had the closest max max vaccination... Max... Mass vaccination <laughs> hub, I'll get there eventually, <laughs> to Wollongong is Sydney, um, where the third biggest city in New South Wales, you've got to travel two hours mm. to get to the closest hub. So I'd have put them in large regional areas. I probably would have worked more closely with the New South Wales and the state governments who do vaccination programs every day of the week and use the GP network as a backstop, not a mm. main stop. Mm. Um, and then I think we've also got a role as leaders, as I said, to ensure that we're running the PR campaigns and ensuring that the things that we say are adding to confidence, not detracting mm. from it. Could I just throw in yeah. another, another bit that really did concern me? And suddenly when we had the first case of a negative reaction to a AstraZeneca, it suddenly was headlines and, and as, uh, it was not put into context and trying to get the statistical message across to the Australian community that this was an aberration and a statistical aberration of, of a, a level that didn't warrant the amount of media attention that was focused upon... <laughs> that, that, that's, that's what caused... That, can I just finish? That's what caused the problem. And, and I really think that we've, we need to tidy up the messaging about how we handle this pandemic and also especially the rollout of the uh, vaccinations. Mm. But using those statistical aberrations, the way the media highlighted that and, and in such a way as just instill fear in people, I've got a greater chance of being eaten by a shark off Wollongong Beach than I have dying of COVID, <laughs> as, as COVID vaccination. <laughs>